Thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist Nicole Karkic with meteorologist Jacqueline Whittle. Good and morning. we're looking at some bitterly cold temperatures for people's mornings. So oh, yeah. maybe not a good morning for many as oh. they step out the door. It's one of those things, you know, it's like we prepare people and everybody's thinking, okay, it's going to be cold, it's going to be cold. Then it happens, you're like, that, it's that cold? You you're know, right. I mean, it's like you got to start your car early, you got to really make sure all of your, your body Here. is covered because yes. it doesn't take long to get frostbitten. Yes. So, yeah, it's cold. And I think we were anticipating this map, Jacqueline, because yeah. we're both wearing purple. We are. <laughs> Yes, and, yes. and purple is the coldest air, blanketing most of the country, as you can see. A little bit warmer there in uh, southern Alberta, Jacqueline, as we yeah. head into Wednesday. But overall, not much movement on this map. <laughs> no, it's just staying in place. It, the Arctic uh, high pressure is uh, is the big player. But, you know, Calgary will get into a little downsloping by tomorrow, which is right. good. They'll bump up their temperatures to about 3 degrees. If you didn't leave by the mountains, you'd be, well, you'd be like Regina and Winnipeg. Exactly. Freezing. Very yeah. cold. And even cold towards Atlantic Canada. Mm -hmm. We've got Halifax. Minus 10 this afternoon, feeling closer to minus 18. St. John's minus 5 after yesterday, your high was plus 9. So a sharp contrast there. That's right. And in Ontario, still very cold as well. Minus teens, but the coldest air yet to arrive tomorrow. In fact, you'll wake up to your daytime high, and then it's going right. to drop through the afternoon Oof. as opposed to the opposite. Let's go to Winnipeg. Winnipeg last year had a lot of problems with frozen pipes, That's and right. uh, the, the province is apparently getting prepared this year so that this doesn't happen again, because we know we're going to be back in the deep freeze. Excellent uh, point. That's good. You're right. We do know this every season. We know that we're up for these kind of cold air outbreaks, but this one, you know, might actually relax by the next few weeks, but then, yes. you know, we're back into it probably by the end of January. So minus 30s, minus 33 for LaRange, northern Saskatchewan, really getting some biting cold. And then we look at the extreme cold warnings, which, by the way, uh, when we get this far north in Canada, the threshold becomes minus 45 Celsius right. wind chills to have the Environment Canada issue this. Exactly. Even minus 50 oh. at times in the extreme north, places like Gillam and northwestern Ontario. And for you this morning in the west, yeah, Alberta. It's cold, minus 14 in Calgary this morning, uh, but a bit better here for the lower mainland. And a lot of people say, why is that? Why are we plus 7 and minus 21? All to do with the Pacific Ocean, right, Nicole? Yes, exactly. And the jet stream's helping out BC as well yeah. this week. And speaking of wind chills, here's what you need to know for frostbite. It only takes just a few minutes. Like if you look at minus 48 to minus 54, that's very high. It takes two to five minutes to get frostbitten. So it's very serious. Some of the things that we're talking about coming up on the show on my end, extreme cold, obviously still a concern. Right. The snowfall forecast for today will tell you who will be into the heaviest bands of snow. Of course, we have Mark Robinson also going to join us. And temperatures improve by next week. Thanks. Thank goodness it does relax. Exactly. Uh-oh. Sorry. Good morning to you. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Woodall. We are talking about snow and extreme cold right across the country on this Tuesday. Yes, uh, we're all just getting back to work yesterday. And boy, are we back to some extremes in Canada. All right, so it is January. We do expect this. Uh, but how long is it going to last, I guess is the question. Uh, we're looking at some uh, video there of some heavy snowfall. I think that's on the East Coast. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a Soyuz, actually. It's on the West Coast, thanks to my producer, Jamie. Um, yeah, so the West Coast getting hit with some snow. Kelowna, the first snowfall in 35 years for you. And, uh, you know, significant snowfall, for that matter. Extreme cold, still a concern. We're going to talk about that. Snowfall forecast for today, that's on the way as well. And temperatures improving by next week. And by improving, we mean the temperatures are going to relax a little bit. So instead of the extreme minus 30s and minus 40s, we're going to see minus teens. That's a little better. How about you in Calgary? Well, yeah, you're looking at a shot of snow, about 5 to 10 centimeters. But here's the good news. You're also looking at a warm-up due to some downsloping. So downsloping means the Pacific air coming in coming down over the mountain ranges and uh, sinking or what we call subsiding so coming down to the surface as it does it warms and we get a boost in temperature sometimes a big boost we call that a chinook today we'll just call it down sloping so tomorrow you'll be up around th two to three degrees jasper 10 to 25 centimeters of snow for you pacific moisture moving on shore snowfall warnings to support that and let's go a little bit further east to winnipeg this idea that person has the good idea they have uh, everything you know covered because it doesn't take very long just a matter of minutes to get frostbite in those temperatures. Winds are sustained at about 10 to 20, and then they pick up to about 20 to 40 in Regina this afternoon out of the northwest. High pressure digging in, Arctic high pressure once again, and then uh, we'll see um, you know, our winds sort of sit around 20 to 40 again in that uh, southern part of Saskatchewan.
All right, we have temperatures like these, minus 30s, minus 33 in Saskatoon with the wind chill. This is this afternoon's temperatures, and you're not going to bump up too much more from there. And same with you in Ontario. In fact, tomorrow, you're going to get into about minus 15 in the morning, and then that's it. You're going to be dropping as the day goes on as opposed to warming up. All right, Deb Medietchka has the right idea. She headed to Arizona. Here she is. Winnipeg, Manitoba, also called Winterpeg sometimes. Well, it breaks, and you want to know why? It's because Winnipeg and Saskatchewan are um, what we call a continental part of our country. In other words, there's not a lot of bodies of water other than Lake Winnipeg. Um, so you get extremes, both in the summer and the winter. I remember someone tweeting me saying, oh my goodness, who would want to live there? That's so cold, minus 50. Lots of people want to live there. It's a beautiful place to live uh, because your summers are just extravagantly uh, beautiful. Warm, dry, uh, lots of great thunderstorms if you're into that. So there's a lot to offer throughout the prairies and in Winnipeg. All right, today, yeah, it's pretty cold. you got to dress for it. Notice that Arctic um, air in the purple color really doesn't budge much over the next few days. However... Calgary, you're going to warm up because of some downsloping winds, and then uh, we are going to see the pattern sort of relax into the long-range forecast. Question is, is where does it go from there? How long will that relax, you know, bit be? All right, this morning it's cold. Minus 30 in Saskatoon. Minus 33. Good morning in Larage. Swift current minus 29. Of course, these are wind chill temperatures, right? The base temperatures are a little better. Regina, the Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning. Minus 38. Look at these temperatures. Minus 40, minus 42 in Brandon. Sunday morning, you woke up to minus 50 with the wind chill. Even Ontario will get some of their coldest air by the time we get into tomorrow morning and your temperature is going to drop throughout the day. Here's your nice sunny long range cold forecast. You can tell by the sunshine and you can tell by that, um, you know, really kind of icy coverage. So when we get temperatures this cold, even the snowfall that we get, whether it be lake effect snow or system snow, is going to be that light and fluffy, what we call high ratio snowfall. So not a lot of moisture in it. Hard to make a snowman with. Minus 20s, minus 30s throughout the northwestern part of Ontario. Minus 40s by tomorrow morning. Sault Ste. Marie, Elliott Lake, minus 40. Sudbury, minus 40. Let's go to Aurelia, Ontario. That's a, that's a shot that we have to share with you. Be careful out on those roads. Go slow. Um, you know, a lot of people that drive up there are used to this kind of weather, the snow squalls, the changing conditions. But for people that aren't from the area, maybe you're, you know, driving up there from Toronto for whatever reason, go slow. You can have uh, visibility go to nothing in just a matter of minutes. So minus 11 today for you in Toronto. Good morning, minus 18. Tomorrow morning, minus 27. Yeah, in the long range forecast, we do get into a bit milder air and then by next week, a lot milder. Stay tuned for more. Good morning to you. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Whittle. Developing stories today, lots to get into. Extreme cold, that's still a concern right across the country. Uh, snowfall forecast for today, we'll let you in on that. And then the temperatures finally do improve next week. So let's just show you how cold it is. Uh, yeah, temperatures something like this. Minus 20 in Winnipeg this afternoon before the wind chill. Uh, minus 21 for you in Regina, minus 19 for Edmonton, minus eight for you in Toronto. But we are looking at uh, temperatures getting even colder for you in Ontario once the Arctic high gets closer to you. Tomorrow, your temperatures, you'll wake up to about minus 16 or so, and that's gonna continue to drop, or at least not go up. Let's put it that way. The sun, doesn't matter that the sun's out. It's too cold of an air mass to warm it up, even with the sun doing its job. Minus 33 in LaRange this morning. Good morning to you in Saskatoon. It's minus 30 with the wind chill, minus 31 in Regina. Uh, remember to protect your skin when it's this cold. It doesn't take very long at all to get frostbite. Same for you in Ontario, minus 15s with the wind chill. East Coast, good morning to you in Moncton, minus 29. Boy, it's been some time that you've been this cold on the East Coast. In fact, the next storm could bring you some snowfall down through the uh, southern shores of Nova Scotia. It's been a while since a storm tracked south of the Maritimes. A lot of them have been br bringing rain. and We've seen the warm part of the storm. Not so much right now. Look at this. Minus 30 in the Gas Bay region. It's going to continue to be cold. Uh, let's take a look here. Satil, minus 35 with the wind chills. Uh, minus 29 for you in Moncton. All right. And how how quickly can you get wind chill when we're dealing with temperatures this cold? Well, you have about a moderate risk when it's minus 28 to minus 39. It takes about 10 to 30 minutes. But then as you get colder, minus 48 to minus 54, which I know sounds like, oh, when, when does that happen? It does happen. It happens in the prairies. You have a very high chance, two to five minutes. That's it. All right. Let's show you this.
take full advantage of it. It's that good kind of snow that you can make snowballs with, you can make uh, snow forts with. I always love making snow forts. Forget the snowman, the forts were really cool. <laughs> you got to hide in them, my brother and I would play. All right, Jasper, 10 to 25 centimeters. Cranbrook, uh, you're looking at about five to 10. Calgary, a fresh five to 10 for you. And then to, to keep with that snow theme, we have the squall potential still going on uh, in, uh, in Barrie. Just a little bit though, less than five for you. But as you get closer to Lake Huron and Georgian Bay through tomorrow, evening uh, we're looking at still the potential for 15 to 30 centimeters grand bend about 10 to 15. the highway 402 401 that area uh, where it goes out to sarnia be careful tomorrow that could be very dangerous we'll have a live look at the radar um, of course and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted. All right, East Coast, 5 to 10 centimeters for you. That's with that next system. And then a little bit of CFX still continuing on the western shores of Newfoundland. All right, so we've been giving you updates with Deb Medichka in Arizona. Here's another one mountains from the interior and he'll let us know uh, just how snowy it is and how the roads are looking and also maybe talk a little bit about the avalanche potential because it, it, it is at high and Mark has experience with uh, you know triggering avalanches he did a story on that a couple years back um, at Rogers Pass I mean I'm anxious to talk to him about that throughout the day Williams Lake still looking at snowfall Kelowna same deal for you this morning how fun for the kids that don't often get that and then Prince George same deal for you Warren front lifting though to the north that'll switch over to rain for the central and north coast and then calgary you'll also see uh, about five to ten centimeters of snow um, with that warm front that ex you know extended right over to the mountains here's a good news for you calgary minus 14 feeling like minus 21 but tomorrow you're gonna have some down sloping winds that's a good thing not quite a chinook we'll call it because the chinook usually will you know boost your temperatures like 10 12 degrees in a matter of hours this will bring you up to about two or three degrees we'll take it yeah minus 25 in edmonton today who will not likely see those down sloping winds so yeah it's a bonus living in calgary you can see five to ten jasper ten to twenty five prince george more like 40 centimeters potentially nordag jasper olds all the way into queenstown we're looking at that snowfall warning there's the warm front that i was talking about here and that'll push uh in through saskatchewan a little bit just the cloud cover and then it really dives down towards the south high pressure gripping areas like winnipeg to toe you see that gentleman's face that's completely exposed don't want to risk that make sure you have a scarf above your face because with temperatures like this it just takes minutes to get frost bite in these uh in this extreme cold lynn lake up through stony rapids extreme cold alert and when you're that far north in canada it takes a uh, minus 45 even minus 50 for environment canada to issue those alerts so it's cold cold lake you're cold minus 28 larange good morning to you saskatoon minus 33 with the wind chill and then northwestern ontario looking something like this with the wind chills pretty cool minus 30s tomorrow uh this is this afternoon minus eight feeling like minus 15 for you in toronto but tomorrow will be your coldest day which means we will trigger more snow squalls and uh, i've been doing a great job at uh, attending all of these you know different accidents but i remember doug gillam saying that behind that storm last week the squalls would be vicious they are vicious and that could continue 401 over to the 402 to sarnia tomorrow that one could be bad so if you have any you know you know uh, plans to take a, a travel that way be careful out on the roads see effect continuing five to 10 centimeters down through Yarmouth. So great time to get on a plane and head south. How about Arizona? That's exactly what Deb Mityichka is doing this week. Here's an update. A lot of cancellations yesterday. Nice to have you along. Happy Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Woodall. How is our Wednesday shaping up? Cold, very similar to what today feels like right across the country. In fact, some of the coldest air we were promising uh, to move through is now here and will last for the next few days. So the coldest temperatures for you in Ontario will be Wednesday. But uh, yeah, it's it's chilly uh, right across the whole country. There's the uh, snowfall potential because of that cold air aloft. We still have the lake effect machine going strong. So uh, 15 to 30 centimeters for Owen Sound down through Grand Bend, the highway uh, 402 tomorrow morning from London to Sarnia. That's where Dr. Doug said for us to keep a really close eye on the squall potential could be uh, really bad. And that, that highway tends to be bad in the past, both the 401 and the 402. Uh, okay, so temperatures this afternoon, minus 15 is what it's going to feel like in Toronto, minus 19 for London. Tomorrow, for you in Toronto, tomorrow morning, you'll wake up to your 
afternoon high of a balmy eh, minus 17, minus 18. And then you'll just sit around that or even drop further throughout the day. So your morning high will actually be your daytime high. So it's going to be cold. And look at these temperatures this afternoon. Minus 28 in Charlottetown, minus 24 for Fredericton. Uh, Stephenville still dealing with lake effect or sea effect snow, I should say. And down through Yarmouth, that's not sea effect. That is this next system here. A little bit of moisture just skirting southern uh, parts of Nova Scotia, PEI. Still seeing a little bit of sea effect today, but you can see the moisture from this storm is really next talking point for us. Next storm for you in Ontario at this point is Thursday into Friday. We could just see some light snow with that. Shouldn't be a huge event. High pressure back in. Look at the squalls. The model picking up on the squalls again. And a potential for a storm that could affect Atlantic Canada in the long range. We're keeping a close eye on what the models think, and that would be, uh, I think, by the weekend, maybe early next week at this point. Too far out to say for sure. Uh, we got you covered, though. Minus 12, Saturday, Sunday, partly cloudy for you in Halifax. Some snow for Friday in Toronto, as I mentioned, that system skirting through uh, the, the southern part of the, uh, the province. Minus 30s, though, in the prairies. Could we get some relief? Minus 29. So we'll have all those details in the Long Ranger. That's coming up. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Oh, happy cold weather. It is extremely cold out there. We'll let you know when you might get some relief from this Arctic uh, high pressure that's really gripping much of Canada. Snowfall forecast right across the country. We have snowfall to talk about and the temperatures do improve slightly for next week. The pattern kind of relaxes. How long does that last? We'll have those details. All right. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Whittle in there. Let's bring Mark Robinson in who is trekking from uh, Vancouver back to Calgary, as I understand, initially, then you're coming all the way home. Tell us about Kamloops in maybe just a few words, how to describe Kamloops. Stuff. I'm hoping I'm not going to kill myself too badly. So back you're going to you. check out the, uh, the powder on the slopes, right, dude? I am. <laughs> All right, good luck with that, Mark. I don't think Mark's a skier. We're going to see how he makes out. Uh, Jasper picking up a good 10 to 25 centimeters of fresh powder. Uh, Calgary looking at 5 to 10. I know nothing about skiing. I'm just trying to fit in here. But Mark is actually going to take a stab at this. Uh, 2 degrees uh, by Sunday. Not too bad in terms of your temperatures. 3 degrees, 4 degrees with the uh, later part of this week. Calgary, look at this temperature difference. Up to plus 2. Now, you'll drop back down to minus 12 after this little down sloping or almost like a mini Chinook, but then next week a lot more tolerable weather. Coldest air is still yet to arrive by today, I would say. And then same for you in Ontario. So the minus in 30s and 40s. Montreal, not too bad today, but it's only going to get colder. Moncton sitting at minus 29. Here's your afternoon temperatures uh, for you in Ontario. Toronto, minus 8 is your core temp. Minus 9 for Hamilton, bottoming out with those wind chills at minus 17. So bundle up out there. Make sure you protect your skin. We'll be back. Cheryl and Jacqueline with you as we take a look at our developing stories. Don't put away the shovel or the snowblower <laughs> or the cold <laughs> weather gear. Or the, the broom or on. the mitts, the hats, whatever you need to get you through this cold Arctic outbreak, uh, do it. How low can you go? We're not talking about limbo. Mm -hmm. We're talking about our temperature, Cheryl. And staying safe in the cold. We'll have some tips with Kelly coming up in just a moment. Let's go first to West Kelowna, B.C. Lots of snow on the ground dealing with 25 plus centimeters of snow. No, which we don't often see those types of totals in the BC interior. We no. get them in the mountain passes. That's right. But to see them in the valley is a bit more unusual. Uh, uh, totally. Un uh, so unusual. It's been 35 years wow. since they've seen that last. I just find that an incredible stat. So imagine the kids. Like there's whole generations that have gone by without <laughs> seeing snow. And it's like, Mom, what is this? You know? That's right. <laughs> when we look at our radar, we can see that the snow is continuing in Alberta and also for portions of BC. But the thing, the story with BC in the south is that it's all retreating off to the north. Right. So we still have numerous winter storm warnings in place. Uh, Prince George and North are kind of coming to mind, but this mm -hmm. is definitely an area that's pretty active right now. Yeah, and that warm front uh, starting to slide down into Alberta. That means too, but there aren't any breaks in the forecast for you, at least throughout this week. Yeah. It remains pretty cold. That's right, and we're going to uh, talk to Dr. Doug Gillum, of course, coming up this hour with the Long Ranger. I know that the pattern is supposed to relax, which is good. Okay. By relax, meaning a slight warm-up, but how long will that last, right? I mean, we are in January. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, we've been talking about the, Siberian air yep. kind of coming in from the north once again. That's right. But speaking of cold weather, we want to turn it over to Kelly Noseworthy right now with some tips from Toronto Public Health about how we can prevent frostbite. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't take much to get frostbite in these type of temperatures. No, that's for sure. And when we look at the temperatures that we are dealing with today, notice mm -hmm. the wind chills in blue. The core temperatures themselves are in white. Some cold weather tips for you now. Yeah, we want to make sure you dress in layers, limit your alcohol intake, and 
this is an important one, and I'm such a doggy lover. Keep your pets inside, folks. We'll be back.